Yeah, and, you know, and the other thing to think about is, and this next, uh, this next type of anxiety we're going to talk about has to do with this. You, you may not know what this person's been through in their life, right? So this next case, I'll, I'll give you an example for, for this post-traumatic stress disorder. Kind of nice, nice segue, by the way. Great. I, I didn't plant this guy, by the way. He just, he just asked me good questions at the right time. Um, somebody who's been exposed to some kind of stress. Let's say, um, in, in our case, it's a woman that gets raped, okay? Let's say it's a woman that gets raped. Well, you know, she's going to have a mistrust for men for a long time, probably. You know, and this case kind of gets into that a little bit. But um, so it may not be, it may look like she's socially anxious, but it may not be a general social thing. I mean, maybe a bunch of women, she's fine. But if it's a mixed group at all, she's uncomfortable because of that. And, it, you know, it could be anything, you know, any kind of trauma could, could do that to somebody, you know. Um, e even if it's like child abuse or something like that and you get into a certain situation, a place that reminds you of that or smell or something like that that reminds you of, of the abuse, bang, it brings back all these flashbacks and memories and things like that. And, you know, and, and it's really it's the place, not the people. So it could be a lot of stuff, I guess. That's a long-winded answer for your question, but. It does take us into post-traumatic stress disorder, which is kind of, uh, uh, we, you know, it's in the news a lot more these days because of the because of the soldiers over in Iraq. Um, so let me give you. Another, I decided not to use a, a military example because I think you guys have all heard a lot of those examples. And the example I'm going to give you, this is a case that's it's very real life. It's not anybody that you know, but it's something that could happen to anybody you know. And um, some of the issues in this case are kind of interesting. And hopefully we'll have time to get to the end of it. Um, so this case is a 20-year-old female victim of a sexual assault. Um, she was in her apartment at college alone, and a male in a stocking hat broke in and held a knife to her throat and raped her. She struggled, but he threatened to kill her, and she feared he would. She, she felt helpless. After the rape, he beat her up and left. He was, she was bruised and bleeding and was found by her roommate an hour later lying on the floor in her room. Um, she was taken to the ER, the emergency room, and treated but not referred to psychotherapy at all. She began having flashbacks and nightmares of the event, even when she thought she was starting to feel better. And, and at that time, when she started to feel like she was getting better and not having so much of those things, she would see like a TV show or a book about a sexual assault, and it would bring all this stuff right back, the fear and the flashbacks of her own trauma. She stops going to college classes or, or classes <clears throat> and starts to avoid uh, social events. Um, she avoids talking about it she, she, to anybody. She doesn't tell anybody about it. Sort of, you know, like people are getting pretty worried about talking about stuff like that. Plus, it brings it back to her. Um, she won't read any read anything about it. Won't watch stories on TV about it. Um, uh, about anybody that's experiencing trauma that's similar to that. She feels like her life has no meaning, and she doesn't have any more future goals. So she used to want to get a college degree, and then she wanted to get a job, get married, and have kids. Does none of that stuff means anything anymore? I mean, her life flashed before her eyes, and now it's like, geez, it doesn't even matter. She's easily startled and hypervigilant. She's always looking over her shoulder and has trouble concentrating. She's, uh, she's jumpy when her name's called or if she's tapped on the shoulder. You know, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, she drops out of college uh, due to missing so much school because she can't go around people. She moves back home with her parents where she feels safer, but unfortunately the symptoms don't seem to be improving after a couple of months, and her parents take her to a psychologist. Okay, um, this is post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? PTSD is the other, I'm going to start calling it PTSD because that's a lot easier to say than all that, all that. that's a mouthful. What is it? It's another brain illness, believe it or not. Um, and it, usually the person, well, always, the person has to be exposed to some very bad trauma. So usually it's like either their own life or somebody else's life right next to them either gets taken or is very close to being taken, okay? Um, and there's usually an intense fear and intense hopelessness, uh, I'm sorry, helplessness that goes along with it. So just like this girl, she fought a little bit, she basically knew she was going to die, so she stopped fighting, and she felt helpless. Well, along with the trauma, there's three other things that have to happen. Okay, one is the person re-experiences this trauma over and over again in some way, and we'll talk about what that way may be in a second. The second thing is that they avoid things that remind them of the trauma, like she's doing with the books and the movies and all that. And, uh, and that can be, and they, the, this is also the second point, but they can get emotionally numb. That usually happens pretty quick after the trauma. Just sort of numb. I mean, yeah, hopefully you guys understand what that feels like. If you don't, someday you, you may know. Um, then the third thing is they get symptoms of increased arousal, all right, after the trauma. And 
so let me go through each one of these three things and kind of give you some examples. But how would you re-experience the trauma? Like we, I kind of this case kind of alludes to it. But flashbacks are one thing. You guys have heard of flashbacks. You know, you've seen, uh, you've seen, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, with uh, Sylvester Stallone, when he was he was the Vietnam vet, I think, wasn't he? Rambo. Rambo, yes, yes. He has flashbacks and <coughs> he's awake. And you know, flashbacks when you're awake and you basically sort of vividly relive what's going on through memories and intense images and things. Uh, nightmares are another thing, another way you can re-experience things. And then um, also you can re-experience things through um, through these things, but by, by but by cues that remind you of the event. So like a sight or a sound or a smell or a place or something like that. And then when it comes to avoidance, you kind of know what avoidance is, but and we talked about that. But um, the numbing part, you know, you, you sort of feel detached from other people. Uh, you lose interest in activities. Um, you avoid places. We talked about that. Um, and then as far as arousal, these folks have a hard time falling asleep. I mean, they can't relax enough to fall asleep. Uh, and staying asleep, even if they fall asleep, is an issue. They get irritable and angry. Um, Hypervigilant, just like this girl. You know, she's gets tapped on the shoulder, or her name gets called from behind her, and she's, she's jumpy. Um, all these things, again, like any of these psychiatric or brain illnesses, these have to interfere with your function, these symptoms. If they don't, then it's probably not, we wouldn't call it PTSD. Um, there's another thing called acute stress disorder, which is just like for a month, and then it gets better. You know, that's a, that's a, uh, it's probably just like this, same part of the brain and everything, but it doesn't last, and that's the difference. Um, now, not everyone that gets exposed to one of these traumas has this has this disorder, right? Why is that? I mean, they, 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 we couldn't figure that out. So at some point, somebody studied and started looking at this, and they found that it depends a little bit on how your brain is wired. Some people seem to be at higher risk for this if they're exposed to a trauma than other people. Why? I don't know. It's, again, it's a, it's a way, the way we're all kind of made, I guess. Um, now, what are some... Uh, uh, examples of trauma, the types of trauma that can lead to this. You guys know about military combat. Violent personal assault, which we just talked about, like a, like a uh, sexual assault, but it could also be like a physical attack, a mugging or a robbery, something like that. Being kidnapped or taken hostage, uh, terrorist attack, torture, imprisonment in a concentration camp or as a POW in some other way. Natural or man-made disasters and severe car accidents. Those are all things that, uh, that can lead to this disorder. They're all traumas. That uh, you know where you're going to see or, or experience near-death situations. Uh, it seems like PTSD is more severe when it's of human uh, causes. So, if uh, for for instance, military type thing or a, a sexual assault or a, um, a battery or something like that, those tend to have they're associated with a higher incidence of PTSD than sort of the more more natural disaster type things. Emotional numbing, like I said, it can occur right after the trauma, um, and the rate of this depends on who you study, right? So if you're looking at if you're looking at uh, people that are exposed to lots of trauma, like combat folks, you know, there's a three to three to fifty-eight percent. It's pretty broad, I know, but somewhere you know, some studies showed fifty-eight percent of these people end up with PTSD. That's kind of a lot. It's probably not that high. It's probably somewhere in the middle. But in the general population, you and me and the rest of us, you know, one to fourteen percent of U.S. adults. Um, it does seem to be twice as common in females as males. I don't know if that's related to some difference in the brain or if it's related to women being more at risk for things like rape and some of these things. You know, maybe that it could be partly related to that. Um, what's the course of this thing? It usually, it usually begins within three months of the trauma, um, typically right away. I mean, it's, you know, not, not, doesn't take that long. I've lost this thing again. Um, about half of the cases resolve completely in the first three months, but, uh, but many cases last 12 months or longer. 